Welcome back to yet another tutorial. Now this is going to be quite an important one. So I have already made a scene with a cube with a rigid body component set to active. Uh, well, all the default settings I just pressed rigid body, and I set up the camera. Now we also have a script for the cube, which is going to rotate the cube on updates, as in every single frame. So what we want to do is we want to add a menu, which is going to pop up when we press the escape button. That menu is going to contain three buttons, resume button, pause, uh, not pause, restart, and shutdown. By default, when you press the button, it's already going to pause the game, so you just need to restart, uh, restart, resume, or exit. So, let's get right into it. Go to the scene panel and add a new UI. So this is going to be our new canvas, so we can just leave it as canvas, and open it up. Now, before I do anything for myself, I want to change the screen uh, settings. So I'm going to add uh, the width to be 1920 and the height to be 1080p. Okay, now that is the size of my screen and uh, that is the size I'm going to export the game to. So uh, yeah, you can just change that if you want. If not, you're going to have some scaling issues uh, with your computer compared to the canvas. Now we can just save that and start working on our UI. So what we want to do is we want to add a backdrop. Now why do we add a backdrop? Basically, when you're playing a game, if it's a very colourful game, your buttons are going to appear with multiple options. Some of them are very important, like exiting the game. If you exit the game and you don't want to, that can be problematic. So to be able to see your buttons properly and clearly is very important. And also, you don't want your buttons to be distracted by the colour of your game. So what we're going to do we're going to add a filled in rectangle as you can see in the shape property uh, panel and that rectangle is not got any text so you can remove the text and we can call it back for background now what we want to do is go to the color section and this is where the most important thing is going to happen we're going to dial down the alpha to be almost semi transparent a little above halfway in the transparency now we can select a pretty dark color maybe a dark bluish gray like that and once we have that we can actually just scale it to be bigger than the canvas itself you can grab these corners and you can uh, sh uh, scale it all the way out you can move uh, hold down the middle mouse button to be able to pan around your canvas I wouldn't recommend scaling out too much because there are a few bugs and it can ruin the perspective of your canvas so we can now save this and uh, we can add some buttons what we're going to do first of all is we're going to deal with this step by step so let's add this to be invisible because we don't want it to launch as soon as we start the game we only want this to appear when we press the escape button now we can save it and exit the canvas for now let's go to the sh uh, sc uh, script tab and add a new trait uh, node tree in the scene tab the node tree is going to be called menu because we're going to add all the different menu uh, buttons and items and events that we're going to need. So first thing we're going to want is uh, on keyboard event. It's going to be set to started and the uh, event is going to be the escape button. Once that button is pressed, let me remind you that we do have physics in our game so we want to pause all the physics in our game. Now to do that the easiest thing to do is to set timescale to zero. So get the set timescale node and set it to zero. Now we also want to bring up the menu because pausing the game is not the only thing we want to do. We also want to have options as in to resume, restart or exit like I've said. So we can add the set visible node for the canvas and we're going to set the canvas to be visible. The element of the canvas is going to be back for background that we just named and created and once we have this we are going to be able to pause our game. Well, let's just see. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to pause our physics in our game. So as you can see when I press it we don't have an exact yeah, not a very good pause in our game because not everything is stopped moving. We do have the menu backdrop that has showed up that we can overlay our buttons onto, which is great, but we don't have a very good uh, paused game. 
So to pause our actual game we need to pause the trait responsible because this deals with all the time related uh, situations such as physics like I demonstrated. But we do have an event that happens every single frame and that isn't affected by the time node. So what we want to do is we want to pause the trait in question. Now to do that you can't exactly uh, go ahead and just add in our trait set paused and then define what trait you want which is something that I would have told you to do uh, in my previous tutorials maybe that doesn't work it doesn't actually affect the uh, the game so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something different we're gonna make use of events so let me just explain what it is if you don't understand what we're gonna do down here in the event tab is we're gonna grab one of three nodes we have an on event, we have a send event to object, and we have a send event global. We want the send event global because we are going to send an event which is basically just a message. Now this event node is basically just a trigger node which is the same principle as the keyboard node, the mouse node, or the physics contact node. These are all inputs that are going to trigger an event. As in once these things happen do something else with that information. So what we want to do is give it an actual event message. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, you can have a bunch of gobbledygook uh, or you can have an actual message so you can understand what you're doing when you open the project up in a few weeks. So we can set this to be stop because we want to stop the game. And that event is going to be set out globally so instead of sending it to an object which is object specific it's going to be a global thing across the entire program and we're going to have to receive that event that message and that's why events are so good because they allow you to transfer information uh, from one uh, node tree to another without having to you know do a bunch of very annoying things so what we want to do is we want to receive that event so we can just go ahead on the event tab and grab the on event node and we can set it to be stop obviously make sure you do spell them the same because if not it won't work now what we want to do here is we want to actually pause our game so we get the trait uh, set trait pause node set it to paused and we're going to grab the let me get it uh, self trait which is gonna look for the trait which uh, is currently housed in as in the trait which is uh, which it is currently placed inside of as in the rotate no, uh, trait. So it's going to set it uh, to be paused and that is going to work hopefully. So now we can go back and we can actually launch our game and see if that changes and fixes the issue. And as you can see we have a successful pause when we press the escape button. Now we want to add buttons to resume, exit and restart the game. So to do that we can just first of all add a small uh, um, a box by pressing Ctrl uh, J over the collected, uh, uh, selected nodes and we can call this pause and UI because we're going to pause the game and we're going to display the UI. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make our UI because so far we only have a backdrop. So let's go ahead and add a button. This button is going to be set to the middle of the screen so set the anchor type to be a center and we're going to also add the color. Let me grab the colors and the color is going to be a sort of orangey because I sort of like that and uh, we also change the hover to be a green because it looks different. It's good to have a different color for the hover. The button press, you don't really notice it anyway, so we don't need to deal with that. And let's go ahead and add a name to this. Uh, the, the text obviously is going to be uh, exit, because that's the easiest one that we can do. And uh, the text is obviously needs to be uh, exit or leave or whatever you want the name to be. I'm just going to grab exit because it makes sense. Now we can set this invisible and we can save that. Over here we're going to grab uh, the uh, set canvas visible once again because every time we have a new uh, object we need to set that object to be visible as well.
so make sure you check visible and obviously it's going to be the exit button that we just made that is the object that's going to be uh, set to visible when our escape button is triggered now once we have that defined to be set visible we also need to define the action to take when that event has been pressed as in when that button has been pressed so what we want to do is we want to grab a uh, canvas uh, node which is going to be the on ele uh, element can on canvas element excuse me uh, and the button is going to be escape e exit in fact exit and uh, this also works with uh, mobile if you leave it as default the click uh, emulator the click in armory is also the same thing as a button press on the mobile device if you export it for a mobile device so what we want to do is we want to set this to just shut down the game so just grab a shutdown node and it's <laughs> as easy as it gets you just do that and it's going to close your game once we have that shut down we also want another button this one is going to restart our game so let's go ahead and grab the escape button what we're going to do is just duplicate this and we're going to set it to visible so we can see what we're doing and let's also set the second one to visible and make sense and now let's separate these let's bring it down and set it to be uh, again maybe again yeah I'm very bad at naming I'm sorry and uh, let's call that again uh, no not again restart goodness me uh, it's getting late okay restart and exit yeah what we're going to do is set these invisible again there we go and we can exit out and deal with this button again uh, so we're going to grab our on element press node which is going to be set to again this time and yet again we are going to restart the scene so what we're going to do is we are going to set scene active the scene is going to be uh, well the only scene uh, we're going to get the scene active get scene active and it's going to branch in so we're always going to loop in the scene that we are currently on which is just restarting the level and uh, I'm not going to bother doing any of that fancy uh, box with text we are going to now add uh, test out the game and see if it works yay we now have an issue uh, I knew I'd forget to do it basically what well, at least our escape works we have created a new button but we haven't defined it to show up in the UI when the game is paused so what we want to do is just duplicate one of these set it to our new button which is obviously again again with 1A and now it would work so now let's test it out and as you can see we have both buttons show up the game has been paused and we have a backdrop to separate the actual game from the menu so we can set a restart and it is not working now why is that? well because the time scale is still set to 0 so in the restart we're going to have to set the time scale I don't like that I'm just going to copy and paste this node instead of shift D and uh, we're going to set the time scale back to 1 so now when we uh, restart the event it's going to restart the game in fact it's going to set that time scale back to 1 okay I think I'm just going to add one more as well and we're going to set it to restart there we go so now what we want to do is we want to add a resume button so that would uh, complete our tutorial so what we're going to do is select the um, again button set it visible duplicate duplicate and bring it down so what we want to do is we want to set this to be uh, res that's not res resume there we go and we can set that to now because yeah it's gonna restart the game to how it was as in right now so we can uh, set that invisible and load it save it in fact not load it once again we grab an on canvas element uh, and set it to be 
the new button now and it's going to uh, set uh, the uh, well, time scale back to 1 yeah it's back to 1 and uh, we are also going to do something as in set the trait to be uh, back to uh, active it, we're going to unpause the trait so what we're going to do is add a new event we're going to send an event global that we're going to call now yeah why not and that event is going to be triggered uh, just like this node tree except in reverse so we're going to set that to now and it's going to do the same thing in reverse as in it's going to play the trait instead of pause the trait just remember to uncheck paused so once that has been uh, the scale has been set to um, one and the trait has been paused we have one last thing to deal with this right here the UI also uh, before we launch the game <laughs> we have one thing also to do and that's define now to be show to show up if not the button won't show up so you won't be able to press it and now finally we can grab all of these nodes one two three and four we can duplicate duplicate them and we can grab them over here I press control s control c control v to duplicate and to paste them here and it's basically just going to set the time scale to 1 set the game trait to be uh, um, unpaused and it's going to set all these invisible so we can uncheck visible on all of these there we go and uh, this may seem like a big complicated node tree but in reality it is just really simple most of it is just setting buttons visible and setting others not visible so we can play this and you can see uh, our beautiful game working hopefully there we go we have exit restart resume let's resume let's restart and the exit also works so thank you very much for watching I hope this helped you a lot if you don't understand anything at all you can just comment it down below I'll do my absolute best to help you out thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day